afternoon, Mr. How are you, Melissa? I'm good, thank you. How good. are you? Quite well. So we are very well aware of the unprecedented strain that the migrant influx has placed on our city's shelter system. One recent example is that there used to be two intake centers for women becoming homeless in the city to go to, and now they have been consolidated into one because one of them was repurposed to take care of migrants. And we feel that it's having consequences from what we're seeing. We interviewed a woman last week who was leaving a domestic violence situation. She said when she got to that intake center, there's only one left now, it was crowded, the delays were so long, and the conditions seemed so uncomfortable and unsafe to her that she moved into a rental car. Coalition for the Homeless and the Legal Aid Society, we know they've been regular critics of your administration's efforts, but they've been flagging your team for a couple of weeks now, saying that the city is again newly violating the right to shelter of these women at that one remaining intake center. Some women not getting a bed for many hours or even a few days. So my question is two parts. What have you been told, if anything, about whether there are violations of the right to shelter? And even if you're not familiar with the situation, Mr. Mayor, do you feel that it's unacceptable for women to be facing delays in getting shelter, or is it somewhat justifiable in the context of the crisis that you just talked about? Um, uh, we are complying with the right to shelters. If there are some specific cases that we did not comply. We're hoping uh, that uh, the advocates uh, bring it to our attention because that is not our desire. That was a good catch. I wish the Giants had you uh, the other day. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> uh, if, if there are cases where there was uh, noncompliance, we, we want to know about it because our goal is to comply. But I, you know, I continue to say, uh, unless you may know, I don't know, uh, did any of those advocates write to the federal government to get the funding that we need? Did any of them? So uh, for us to talk about those who are doing right, I want to know all those who are critiquing my administration, show me the letter that you sent to the federal government saying this is wrong what you're doing to New Yorkers. We, sh we will have delays in uh, communication. We should not have delays in those New Yorkers who are supposed to find beds with a certain period of time. That should not happen. That's the, that's the rule. And you feel that it is not no, I have not been told that. It, it, it has. Uh, and I'm, I meet with my team every morning to deal with this crisis. I have not received that information. Let's, we got to move on, sorry. Let me finish the question she asked. Curious, yeah, yeah. Were you aware that there was a story about this Friday and Saturday and that your team was... Then the team looked into it as soon as, soon, as, soon, as we say, soon as we heard it, the team looked into it. Now, are you going to fight... When, you, when you're dealing with 40,000 migrant asylum seekers, you know, we need to really hear that number. Our shelter system and those who are in care... Uh, the number reached over 70,000, unprecedented, never before in the history of our county. If we go to one, two, three people out of those 70,000 that says, you know, I had to wait a little longer, um, it was crowded, yes, it's going to be crowded. You're going to have to wait a little longer. We're going to ask everyone to be patient with us as we deal with a crisis. I need us to really put this in the same mindset we put COVID, we waited longer, we had to uh, go to unprecedented circumstances. This is a crisis, and we are responding better than any other municipality. Okay, Kyle, go ahead. Hi, thank you. 